Hey everyone, welcome to the autobiographical narrative unit. First, we're going to start off with the big question. What is a narrative? All right, so right before we dive into what is a narrative, make sure that you're following along on your pod, even though you can see the slides here on the video, because there will be some activities that come up as we are learning. A narrative is a telling of some true or fictitious event or connected sequence of events recounted by a narrator to an audience. Some simple examples of narratives could be stories like Aladdin, the tortoise and the hare, nursery rhymes. It can get autobiographical with Malcolm X's autobiography, or it could even be something like the Civil War that you're learning in U.S. history or modern world history. So the six stages that we're going to review are exposition, conflict, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. We're going to start off with exposition. This is the beginning of the story, where you'll find introductions to characters, descriptions, or details of the setting and background of the story. This could include place, geographical location. This could include time. This could include weather conditions. And that could be wherever the story is taking place, whatever time, whatever year. And if it's sunny, rainy, how does that change things? Or what does that tell us about the context of the story? Conflict. This is when the first problem arises. Avatar The Last Airbender. Conflict with the Fire Nation. Another example could be the Avengers movies, specifically Infinity War. Conflict with Thanos. Or maybe Moana. The conflict is the heart of Tefiti being stolen. It's killing the island. It creates a problem in the story for our characters to journey on. So conflict. It's essential to the plot. Opposition ties incidents together and moves the plot forward. And conflict is not just limited to arguments, because that may be the first thing that you think of. This could be any form of a struggle, any type of problem that occurs or comes to fruition because of something that's happening in the story. There may be minor obstacles within that dominant struggle. So based off of the previous examples, let's just say with the Avengers, there's clearly multiple obstacles or incidents that have to occur for this finale within the movie itself for the heroes to even get to Thanos. That could be considered the many minor obstacles within the dominant struggle, being Thanos. And the minor obstacles are the Infinity Stones, right? Infinity Stones. There we go. Because all the characters are on a journey to collect the stones before Thanos does, but Thanos is the overarching dominant struggle here. So within conflict, as we've described, there are clearly different forms of struggle, different forms of conflict. And the two that we're going to look at are internal and external. So first with internal, there could be the struggle within oneself. This could be the character versus the self. They're struggling with their own soul, physical limitations, choices that they've made. And then there's external. This could be a variety of things. Struggles with a force outside of oneself. This could be a character versus a character when they're just struggling against another person. Maybe a fight or maybe an actual argument. This could be character versus nature. Struggling against weather conditions, the environment, animals, whatever is happening around the character themselves. Or character versus society. This is a little more abstract. It could be characters being pitted against ideas, social norms, practices, or customs of others. So with character versus self, let's think back to the Avatar, the last Airbender example. When Aang is preparing to fight the Fire Lord, he struggles with his morals and turns to his past lives for guidance, to kill or not to kill a literal struggle with his own soul, choices that he has to make, and physical limitations that he is trying to deal with. He does not want to kill. Aang versus Fire Lord. So character versus character. Uh, we could think of, again, the last example. Thanos versus the Avengers. Uh, character versus nature. Moana. That's literally a story about a character versus the heart of Tefiti because nature is dying all around them, talking about the environment that's dying, talking about maybe not necessarily animals, but creatures, definitely weather, spirits uh, that they're encountering in the story. With character versus society, let's think back to the Avengers. Uh, they struggle with, it's, what is it, the United Accords, I think, uh, when you know they're dealing with the damage that's being done by their supposed heroic deeds. So all of these different types of conflicts that we just looked at, they lead into rising action which is a series of small conflicts that are introduced. Share an example of conflict. What's an example of internal or external conflict that you can think of? 
and try not to post something that has already been shared. So climax is any moment of great intensity in a literary work. This is kind of hinting at the idea that the climax can happen at any point in the story and there can be different sections where this great intensity happens multiple times. This is when conflicts that rising action, internal, external conflict that we were talking about earlier, it's when the conflicts reach a peak or turning point and becomes unbearable. This point in the story usually determines how the conflict will be resolved. So spoiler warning, I would like to think people have watched Infinity War Endgame by now, but uh, again, let's just talk about the Avengers. Turning point here is in the fight against Thanos, um, or it could be at the end when he does the thing, or it could be when they fight at the end of Infinity War. Or it could be with Endgame, uh, when Tony gets all the stones. This could be another turning point in the fight against Thanos. This could still be considered a turning point or a great moment of intensity, which after these things typically happen, it leads to something called the falling action, where solutions that could be suggested to resolve the conflicts that were happening throughout the story. The falling action shows the results of major events and resolves loose ends in the plot. Even though Aang finds an alternative to murder before his fight with the Fire Lord, this is still contributing to the resolve of major events in the show's finale. Aang has the opportunity to speak with his past lives for wisdom, and then he encounters this lion turtle that offers an alternative to violence. Hence the definition. Solutions are suggested for the conflicts. Which brings us to the resolution. This is similar to falling action, and it's when conflicts are resolved and there are no more problems. Maybe not necessarily there are no more problems, but certain ones were resolved in the story. If we think about Moana, this was when the heart of Tefiti was returned, and the rest of the story ends. The everyone is able to voyage on the ocean again. They have resources. Uh, Tefiti is no longer angry and destroying their environment, and they can live happily ever after. So if you've been following along on Nearpod, change over to the next slide. There's another collaborate board, which you'll find. Here, I want you to share an example of a climactic point. Think of a turning point in a show or story. This could be in a book, in a movie, a TV show, um, any form of media that you can think of, and try to share something that hasn't been posted or that was talked about in this video. What's another turning point that you can think of that you would like to share? I hope that was useful in looking at the six stages of the narrative. Hopefully that was review for some of you. If not, uh, hopefully you, this helped clarify the various parts of a narrative that we're going to be looking at in this autobiographical unit. Up next is mastery check number one. I'll see you in that video. Peace.